That's oh, kind of my background. Oh. I'm Nils. And I'm Alexis. And um, we get a lot of questions about our business and how, why and how we got into business, why we work together as a married couple. Um, so I get a lot of messages inquiring. So we figured why not make a video about it. We have a cheat sheet, so um, don't mind us. We just wanted to actually like hit on a few things. So um, we own an excavation company, a union excavation company here in Minnesota. We're going into our third year. Um, we started small. in 2020, very small. He's our full-time employee. It's literally just us, husband and wife. Um, and I guess we'll do a little bit of background of how we got into it. So I have a background in, uh, well, first asphalt. I did that for quite a few years and then I got into commercial excavation and site work. And in reality, I've been operating equipment since I was just a wee little guy because my parents, they also kind of dabbled in dirt work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I guess um, my background, I have more of like a customer service and event planning background. I actually have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice with the intention of actually going into law enforcement and that didn't work out. Um, actually right out of college, I did do um, a couple years as an IMO dispatcher and I still work full time outside of our business, which is also so basically she, a full time job. An emergency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, so doing this and um, I guess people always kind of laugh at that because they're like, okay, well what, I, I get it, but um, we actually work really well together as husband and wife because of, we both bring different things to the table and it blends really well. Um, both of our strengths are probably each other's they, weaknesses. They go together good. Yeah. Yeah. Why are we doing what we are doing? Yeah, I guess along with um, wanting to like work for ourselves, we also... I mean, isn't that the dream? That's what everybody, you know, like go out and do your own thing, be self-sufficient in some sense, not needing the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, with we've been together like a decade, so a long time, well, yeah, and he's been in the business for well over that. So I guess we could we see do's and don'ts, and not just like the businesses he's worked for, the companies he worked for, um, but even having an experience with hiring contractors ourselves, we see what we like and dislike, and um, we truly want to be someone that we would hire yep. um, because we wanted to have quality work done. We wanted to make sure we were talking with reliable people. Um, and really our goal was to not only better ourselves, better um, the community around us and our, our, our and, situation. And build a company that has a good, uh, like a positive culture, someplace that you want to go to work every day. Right. Or at least most of the days. Yeah. You know, I, we know what we want yeah. and what we would want to see in a company. And in my time in the industry, I've seen a lot of stuff to where there could be improvement, right? Uh, you know, in your quality and and communication, general experience. Yeah, yeah, and communication and general experience. I mean, that was also why, um, when it comes to again putting our our abilities together and what we're capable of. Um, I mean, there's no unread messages by any means. Nope. I mean, if you look at my phone, I have no notifications because oh. I will get back to you. We have, I will email you back. We've gotten a lot of jobs just off of the fact that we are so responsive. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, what, yeah, that's what we would want to see in a company. I shouldn't say unheard of. It's just, and it's not common. Yeah. And that, and that's from feedback we've actually gotten from people. Um, but I guess we can start out from the beginning of how we started. Um, people always want to know like, what are the first steps? And really, oh, if you Google it, there's so many things and it's just a huge mountain. So I just figured I needed to start chiseling away at it. Um, so the first thing I did was establish an LLC here in our state. Um, I then went and got um, all my tax stuff figured out. I then also got a bank account for our business because I knew I wanted to step out on the right foot um, and have that established. Everything above board, everything yeah. correct. There's a right. lot of times where you try to do something and it could be you know there's an easy or a cheaper way to do it and that's not the way to do it right i wanted to make sure um our foundation was at least solid 
sorry, Hammer's walking around. I wanted to make sure our, our foundation was solid for our business. So making sure that every, we had our ducks in a row. Um, and I mean, that even came down to, uh, again, I had criminal justice background. So I had no experience with accounting. I went out and got a bookkeeper and she is great. And um, she helps me with tax stuff, tax stuff. And I have, it's above me. So I went out and got QuickBooks and it's not the cheapest nor it's, is it the most expensive, but um, she can access it and then I can access it remotely too. So I can log into it, make sure all of our ducks in a row because um, you know, I, I didn't want to throw, I have this huge pile of receipts at the end of the year. I wanted to make sure I could actually track everything. Um, and that's really been helpful, especially when it comes down to numbers and looking at um, like forecasting kind of where we're going to be. Um, yeah, it's definitely a great tool. Uh, something that you might hear Alexis throw around a lot is uh, quality over quantity. And this is one of those things where you want quality software, just like your equipment. You know, you want quality equipment. You want stuff that you're not going to have a lot of downtime on. Right. Uh, that's why you'll see that we use a lot of new equipment or newer equipment because... Which was a hurdle within itself yeah. because as a new company... Um, we we attempted to go get business loans and that didn't work I and mean, you have to have established yeah you have to be established and although they're like oh for small businesses yep. it just didn't work out i mean we even had um an attempt at potential financing um but reading the fine <laughs> reading the actual contract they wanted 50 percent equity of our company and that was for nothing essentially nothing it right. about maybe half of a piece of equipment that we were trying to purchase right which is um Outrageous. flattering well, that they wanted in our company however it's, still it's not good. what we yeah, wanted it was a lot <laughs> um so it's one of those things where we there was a lot of so i guess how did we get our original financing uh so we actually ended up taking from a 401k and that you know that bought us a dump truck mm -hmm. that bought us some other equipment and what I would like to say with that I know that some people are going to frown upon it but we're investing in ourselves mm -hmm. we could have had that money sit in the stock market and we probably would have lost most of it in the and last again long, we, but. we should be saying this we are not business experts this is simply all of our own opinion yep. and what we did in our company it is not advice. No. Nope. Um, our opinion. This, this is, is just what's our worked opinions. for us. Yeah. This is what we have. Exactly. Out. This is exactly what worked for us. Um, because, again, we needed money, right? I mean, we had savings, right? But, again, it wasn't going to be a dump truck. It wasn't going to be equipment. It yep. wasn't going to be, oh, my gosh, even There's operating insurance. costs, yep. insurance. Um, this is a very, uh, this kind of company, unless you're doing it, you know, buying one little piece at a time, side jobs, whatever, you're not going to come into this business without debt. Right. Unfortunately. And, um, and you can do that. That's, there's nothing wrong with slowly building your business, but we wanted to break into it. Especially because from the beginning, he was our full-time operator. Um, so we knew we needed work. And it's actually funny because looking back, it gives me a little anxiety to even think about this, but the first year we were only booking out a week or so in advance we would we would finish a project and then i would go what are we going to do yeah and work just kept popping up yeah we so also then. weren't even working with contracts um and i'm actually surprised that we were paid by all but one yep. in the first year which is a huge learning lesson that person that we worked with is the reason why i went and got a con like i went and contacted an attorney and got in a contract i think it's like right after that alexis had uh, the attorney dropped contracts. So yeah, so I reached out to a con. Uh, this person was pretty proud of themselves, and they straight up told us that uh, this was a learning experience for us. Yep, um, and they, it was. They were quite wealthy and uh, could obviously afford to pay for the work, but chose not to. And yeah, and was very rude to our face about it, knowing what they did, and um, we just smiled, ate it, and it was a couple thousand dollars. Moved on. Moved on. And so huge learning lesson, especially in her first year. And we, um, I went and contacted an attorney and she worked specifically for contractors and construction specifically. And um, she drew up something and it's, it, I wanted it a contract. I wanted it to be a contract that was um, small enough where I could understand it and read it, but also where I could explain it too. Um, so I wanted something really simple and she got it. And 
Um, we actually, everyone that we work with in our second year this past season, signed a contract and we require deposits yeah. now. So that kind of, I think that that's a key thing to be uh, thinking about is your contracts and your deposits because your work doesn't just magically go away at that point when you have a deposit or your contract. Right. Right. And we wanted to make sure, um, because I think this is probably a good example of our contracts. Um, I can specifically think of one one client where they said, yes, the estimate looks great. Let's go ahead with it. I told them what day we could start, sent them our contract, and we never heard from them again. We never got a contract in the mail. We never got um, a deposit in the mail. So it's one of those things where if we didn't have a contract and we went to their house, completed the work, would yep. we have even gotten paid? Mm -hmm. Because this past year, our second year in, I mean, we were booking months in advance. I um, think at 1.4 to five months or so. Yeah. Yeah, most of well, we had a pretty much our whole summer booked out early spring. Yeah, yeah, and that was um, amazing. And we actually had repeat customers too, yep. people coming back to repeat do repeat customers, word of mouth. Yeah, it's been great. We're we're not necessarily uh, positive. In our okay, but in the second year, how do you expect? Oh, uh, what, I guess if you like I said, it's a it's it's a very like there's a lot of debt. It's a debt heavy. Business. Right, and because of the equipment, because of the equipment, and yeah, so if and we didn't have that, we would be doing great. Well, I mean, you can tell them. So, our as growth. far as far as our, our growth, um, between the first and second year, we our gross profit grew 107 percent, um, which is amazing to see. Um, and again, it's not about the money for us, it was simply clearly who doesn't want to make money, but we're not looking to be the next biggest excavation company no, we, wanna, we want we to just want to live comfortably and survive yeah. we want to i mean it would be great if we could have uh you know some employee like a crew or two right and we could have that positive uh atmosphere and family oriented as atmosphere <laughs> and just give people you know like i said some place that they want to work yeah where they want to come into and you know they want to be part of something right right um and I guess the first year we should probably hit on how we even got our first jobs. Um, so along with the handful of things that we did in the beginning, I designed a website and our social medias because that's my generation, right? So love social media. And um, I started doing that right away. And that we started Facebook advertising, Google advertising, um, and that brought in all of our clients, yeah. um, which is amazing. So all of our estimates, all of our clients. And the word of mouth was very slow to grow like it's just finally starting to get to that point right. and this will be our third year coming but now it's you know oh N nelson alexis do that mm -hmm. nelson alexis have a company do that right so i mean things come with time and if you just you know keep at it like i said it was week to week that yeah. first year it yeah. was scary but it was a in the, it, it's funny too because even in the middle of it like we were never scared per se, but looking back on it, it was intimidating. <laughs> and um, I would be intimidated to go back to that. But um, I guess it was also coming down to, we really try to, s sorry, that was Hammer, if you can hear him. Apparently he's really exhausted. He's, uh, he's napping down he's the napping. desk here. So. Like budgeting within our means. So we did go out and finance um, uh, in the first year, I think in like end of March, April, we went out without even having any jobs. Yeah. So we went out and financed um, a skid steer and a mini excavator, yeah. and um, which worked out. But we were also mindful because in this business here in Minnesota, um, although companies do it, they work year round. With us, we knew that we were going to be there. That's more half of the year. You have to be a pretty established contractor to have year round work, or you need to know somebody. Right. Uh, but yeah. we knew we knew we weren't going to so yeah. we knew that we were okay in the down months in the down months how we're paying for this because we knew that the company most likely wouldn't have all the savings we yeah. you know we had expenses um, especially you have it in the first couple of years of business not only do you not know your full expenses always but you don't know, something can pop up um, and, and it's yeah so it's scary so you're you're just learning right and um if so you're not learning then there's something wrong you right know, you're so it, constantly be learning. again <laughs> i work um full-time outside of the business which is also full-time but 
um, we knew that we wanted to budget within our means. So budget with what I can afford throughout the winter to make sure that we're getting through it. And then we also wanted to better ourselves and then better our like situation and have a positive impact on our community. Um, yeah, so hopefully, I guess the plan would be that eventually we'd have some people working for us and that our company would be a, uh, have like a very positive culture, very family oriented culture and be mm -hmm. somewhere that people actually want to come to work. Right. I know, um, I guess this is probably one of the examples of going back to Nell's working for different companies. He would have, a, whatever, a doctor's appointment and I get this industry is very seasonal, but if he has a doctor's appointment or I have a doctor's appointment, he needs to go with me or whatever, what it may be, they would give him so much crap about it. And I get they don't have PTO, union, whatever, but I think that's absolutely ridiculous because outside of this, you still have a life. Um, so I think going into that, I we were we wanted to be really mindful of that we are creating a culture that's really family oriented because that's what we are. We're family. What I lack, I mean, he excels at and vice versa. So we um, we work really well with each other. And um, we also have the same goals, which as a husband and wife, we have the same goals. And um, I mean, I think there's only been a handful of days where we had disagreements. And um, I mean, and anyone does. Everybody so, disagrees. Yeah. You know, at some point, everyone disagrees. It's just, yeah, yeah. Part, just part of the deal, right? Right. So luckily, uh, it's not very often. And it all works out nicely. Uh, if you do watch our TikToks and whatnot, you'll see that we do have quite a bit of fun and we are mm -hmm. fairly silly, even if in this video it doesn't seem like it. So right. Alexis, uh, she's a very uh, glass uh, half full and I am pessimistic, so my glass is always uh, empty. Yeah, and there's not, there's not like there's anything wrong with that because he's always thinking like 50 steps ahead and he's looking at it from every aspect of what could what go, can go wrong. What can go wrong. Because if something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong for me. And I'm, I'm not like that. I'm definitely glass half full. And um, I think one of the things with starting like a business is I was like, what's the worst that can happen, right? Like he goes and works for somebody else. After this, we close up shop. Um, and I guess another thing too, when it comes to like mindset of, glass half full is, I don't know, it's probably too much, but um, my sister passed away when I was nine and my dad passed away when I was 16. So I'm like, hey, as long as no one's dying, we're good, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Nels is just like, sound the alarms. It, everything's hitting the fan. Yeah. And it's gonna go, it's gonna be the worst thing that's ever happened. And I'm just not like that. So um, I think that's where we mesh really well together. I think probably in our personal life and then also our professional life where we balance each other very well. Yeah. Uh, I can bring them back down to earth mm -hmm. and not to say that I don't get anxious about things or I don't, um, worry I mean, about things. Yeah. I've gotten a lot better about it. Uh, before my dad passed, he told me something that I think about quite a bit and that is, uh, you can't always win. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, that relates to a lot of things. You know, you didn't get the job, something goes wrong on the job. You just, you know, nothing's going right. You can't always win. Sometimes right. you gotta lose. And that's, I mean, that's the learning. Yeah. Win or lose, you're, no matter what you're, you're learning. And if you're not, like I said, there's a problem. Yeah, and my motto's always been like, things happen for a reason. I just know things are gonna fall into place. And like I said, what's the worst that can happen with this business? We close up shop and he goes and works for somebody else. Okay, cool. Like people work for other people all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of our mindset, but I guess we should probably wrap it up here because we've tried recording this a handful of times to be full transparency and uh, it gets too long, but there's a lot, there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to cover, I don't know. Maybe we'll touch on it like again in a different video. If you have some, you know, something that we didn't really talk about that you'd like us to talk about or some ideas that you'd like us to talk about as far as like our business mm -hmm. experience and what's happened or, you know, any of that. Yeah. Any... Let us know, comment, you know, and we'll try to work on that. Right. Exactly. So, um, we are probably going to get ready for Christmas. Yeah. So 
we are going to go and do that. But we appreciate you watching. And like we said, we are not business experts. Nope. This is just this our, is our opinion. Our opinion completely. Do not take it as uh, no. advice yep. or any of that. This is an opinion. And this is how we did our business. I built yep. it. Happy holidays. Like, comment, subscribe. I know that I'm not the best looking guy, but please keep coming back to watch. <laughs> Thanks.